most dynamic competitors in the game. And Jogo Hayes, a lot of attention on this young man as he's coming up through the ranks. So this is one of those clashes we didn't expect to see happen quite so early in the division, but it's going to be a treat. Oh, and look at that. As you just say that, Mayram gets a beautiful sweep. He locks the close guard around the knee and gets right on top. Interesting to note how as well the winner of this will go against Jordan Weissman and Kevin Carrasco. So this side of the bracket is just absolutely rife with dangerous competitors. Mayram Alves is the number two seed, the DreamArt representative on top in the blue gi. Diogo Hayes, not as a result of lack of skill, but as a result of a lack of competition points, it means that he is the number 16 seed. So that is why we've seen these two high-level athletes matched up so early in the bracket. And that is a reminder, Jake, for anybody who is looking to become a competitor that competition experience counts because those experience points that you gain at, at smaller tournaments throughout the year, throughout the season, will give you an, an advantageous position when it comes to the to the seeding of the main brackets at the at the majors. Absolutely, yeah. And like you just said, I, it's like Diogo, Diogo just now, Diogo had just now uh, became a black belt. This is his black belt debut here at IBJJF Pan. So he doesn't really have the opportunity to get those points, but you saw Mayram had a bye first round. So he's exactly. able to go in there fresh. Diogo has to go in there. Well, you, I guess you could look at it two ways. You could look at it, he went in there either warmed up or he went in there with the possibility of something getting hurt. Yeah, great points, you know, but... Mayor Malvez, Jogo Hayes, 50-50 with lapel. And I mentioned this briefly in the last match, that this is not just mine, but from talking to many coaches and competitors here this weekend, the lapel 50-50 is considered to be one of the one of the most complicated positions in jiu-jitsu right now, one of the worst positions, because it is, it is very much a, uh, a controlling position. It's very difficult to escape from. It's very powerful, and, and yet it slows things down to a glacial pace. And it is very difficult to escape from, which, of course, is great if you're looking to slow somebody down. But it makes the matches often somewhat frustrating to watch. I feel like uh, one of the reasons people will employ it so much is in situations like with Diogo Hayes just now, he gave up a sweep very early in the match, and 50-50 is sort of a teeter-totter position in which you can trade sweep points fairly easily. I would say it is definitely going to be difficult to see how the match will turn out now, just because, I mean, okay, now the score is... Tied four, four to four. four. Yeah. But Mayram started on top. So he is the gonna be the one that's able to sweep back in the 50-50 at the end of the match. And I think we're gonna see a little bit more of uh, the clash in styles. Because this is sort of an equalizer. 50-50, it doesn't matter if someone is way, way better at passing than me. If they lock them up in a good 50-50, it's gonna be difficult for them to get out just by the nature of the position. So we'll see once this opens up, assuming it does the clash of styles and uh, a little more color in this match, I would say. And one of the things about 50-50, like you were saying, how is when, when the lapel is employed on top of it, it becomes much more difficult to escape. You can't really throw feet submissions. Uh, a lot of people in 50-50 like to throw attacks such as knee bars. We've seen Herbert Santos do knee bars a whole bunch, and he sort of popularized that. A lot of people started going for that. And, and uh, also, uh, toe holds from 50-50 are very popular. But when you throw the lapel on top of it, it's just difficult to get those things going. But I think this is how it starts. This is how you get out of the 50-50 position, is by throwing attacks in the back. Alves is uh, a back belt from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Not originally from Sao Paulo, based in Sao Paulo, Brazil, trains with Dream Art. Also, uh, very strong connection to the Gigo Jiu Jitsu team. Diogo Hayes out of Manaus, the Fight Sports Manaus, trains under the tutelage of Melky Galvão and has done since he was about 10 years of age. 
Jogo Hayes has been very active of late, competing in both gi and no gi. He won the ADCC trials in Brazil in uh, February. And this is the first time we've seen him put the gi on in the States as a black belt. He competed in Brazil to get the necessary points to be able to qualify for this tournament. But this is going to be interesting. And there's a, that's a, I actually, I, that is one of the few 50-50 guard techniques I, I genuinely like, is that sweep that he just hit right there, because it's um, very reminiscent of the 50-50 guard sweep that Gustavo Batista does so well. It's almost like a scissoring motion, the way he kicks down with his top leg and, and takes out the supporting leg. But the problem here that we're seeing, Jake, is that this match, that there is nothing really significant happening. There's uh, an exchange of sweeps. They're locked into this 50-50, which by the very name describes the fact that, that there is no clear advantage for either person. And this seesaw motion of scoring, scoring, back and forth, back and forth. Basically what will happen is we'll probably see them open up their, ga their, their games within the last 45 to 60 seconds of the match. And it feels like a 10 minute match is being reduced down to 45 seconds of real action. And the rest of it is preamble for the real jujitsu. And in terms of winning tournaments, no doubt, very effective. In terms of uh, for a viewership experience and for the fans trying to watch this, it's uh, it's not so great. Well, let's let's talk. Uh, take a step back. Talk about strategy, like you were just talking about for a second. You uh, had mentioned the very beginning of this match that Mayram, when he gets going, you use the keyword get. When he gets going, it's hard to stop. Imagine Diogo Hayes might have even had the game plan, knowing okay, Mayram, I can't let him play it open too much. I need to lock him in a position that's going to isolate him and Absolutely. slow him down. So, from a gamesmanship standpoint and from a competitive standpoint. Genius work by Diogo Hayes to put him in a position that by nature is going to give him, let's say it opens up in the next minute. He's going to have the energy to deal with Mayrim. But dealing oh, with... Strategically speaking, it's uh, it's without question. It's 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 the absolute correct game plan against somebody as dynamic and as uh, uh, somebody as explosive as, as, as Mayrim. But it's, uh, it's all about legacy, isn't it, as well? It's how do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be the, the guy remembered for winning in spectacular fashion? or winning on the narrowest of margins. And well, I think that that is, a, is something that we see. It's a question of mentality among the athletes and this winning at all costs attitude that, uh, that we've seen from some athletes. It's gonna turn around, it's gonna, it's gonna bite them in the ass a little bit as, um, as the game progresses, because especially with more professional opportunities becoming available for the athletes, they, may not receive the same invitations and opportunities as uh, as their counterparts. And that's not to say, I mean, we, we like, like we had mentioned, Diogo Hayes uh, recently came off a very impressive performance, the ADCC uh, second Brazil trials, where he beat Diego Pato in the final and did some really incredible stuff there. So, so it's not that he's not capable. Absolutely. And, and you just saw it there. He, was going, he went for a knee bar earlier off of Mayrim's movement and... Um, I believe that this is chalked up mostly to a specific strategy that Diogo wanted to employ versus Mayrum. And, you know, uh, that the strategy he employed, a 50-50, like we said, it's a double-edged sword, the very nature of the name 50-50. He could be beat from his own position. And uh, it is a very tough position to maintain. It's, it's tough to willingly keep a fight so close. It's tough on your psyche. But, um, I mean, tied 10-10... Going to a ref's decision, it's going to be very difficult for the, the, the judges to make a discrepancy based on the same position happening the entire match. And if I had to put my guess on it, I would say that it would be Mayrum because at the very beginning of the match, he was the only one that secured a sweep from a non-50-50 position. He was the one at the very beginning of the match who swept from closed guard, and then they ended up in this teeter-totter back and forth. So... Yeah, Mayrim doing everything he can to keep his balance here. They're doing this a great job. Down to it. This could come down to it. If Diogo Hayes is not able to score, this is not going to go to a decision. He's down two right now. If he can't get one more sweep back, 
Looks like Miriam Alves is going to be the winner here. Wow, six sweeps to five from the 50-50 over the space of 10 minutes. Not the crowd. Still, all things considered, not a bad...